episode four of C has been well completed, watched. What do you, how do you, I don't know. The title of it is The River, and they kind of left episode three with a pretty big cliffhanger because now the witch yeah. hunter has finally caught up, I guess is probably the best yeah. way to put it. But before that, I did want to mention one thing because I remember bringing up how did they do the blindness effect of the all the eyes? I thought it was a contact, but I actually was doing some research and they found or they said that it's all a visual effect done in post-production. So someone mm. had to go in with every pair of eyes shown in every scene for everyone wow. who's blind and create the effect, which wow. is pretty, it's pretty incredible yeah. <laughs> to do that that's... because that's a lot of work to go through and redo that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure that actors like that more than having to wear contacts. Yeah, so... so. Also, props to the actors, though, for, for selling the blindness, I, at least from my perspective. I thought it was, it's, it adds another level to the acting to me. Yeah. No, they do a good job. I, I know we talked about that a lot, but I feel like, or you said they have, like, trainers. Like, there's, like, blind trainers or something yeah. there that, like, help them so with in, mannerisms and things like that. There's a associate producer. I forget his name. Let me see if I can find it really quick. One of the show notes... I put it on there. Go there real quick. I want to be. I want to say the name so I don't. Yeah, you give him credit. Yeah. So they you his name is Joe Stretche. Uh, he's a blindness consultant. Okay. And so he's a credited as a producer on the show. Okay. But he's basically helps TV shows do this kind of stuff to portray it and i think they actually had one of the actresses who's kind of an extra she was also actually legally blind as well oh okay so they tried to be as close to real as possible with some of this stuff like being accessible yeah so yeah it's pretty cool i think yeah yeah i feel like it can't be overstated i wonder how much i got paid who had to go in every set of eyes and do that for every scene i wonder how much you got paid for that yeah that's a lot of work <laughs> yeah, definitely but um back to this episode i love so i loved at the end of episode three fresh blood i think it was that cliffhanger but then when it starts it starts <laughs> like it's not like you know it doesn't take a while it's now we're gonna get you into it you waited i guess if you watch it as it airs you would have had to wait a week you know because this would have been a this. month into the show if we're watching yeah. it <laughs> the witch hunters are there so just imagine 20 years of you chasing someone essentially or trying to find someone and they've been running away hiding from you this whole time and you finally catch them like you're not fucking around <laughs> you're like, you're like all right here we go especially um, if you're i forget his name oh my god tamak did you yeah if you're him he just literally almost got sentenced to death and now he's been given second, third, fourth. I don't know how many chances you want to call this. But right. <laughs> if you're him, he's like, thank God I got a second chance at this point. <laughs> right. And he's like, fuck y'all. This is like personal <laughs> at this point. So the stakes are there. It like really starts off our main group of Baba Voss, Magra. I think I'm saying that right. Yep. I always forget the daughter's name. It starts with an H. Hanwa. Han Hanwa. Yeah. And Kofun. I think that's it, right? Someone else is. With there's Paris, and then Paris. they add in Bo, I think her name is. Yeah, you're right. So that's like the core group. They all leave, right? They dip. They're like, you guys stay. The rest of the village stay here. We're going to get out of here because we're the quote unquote witches. And it's just, I'll skip, I'll skip ahead not too much, but a little bit. But they escape through the forest and they're making their way out. And they come up to like a raft, I guess, or a boat essentially that Baba Voss made over the 20 years and i know me and when, it, when we saw that we were like yo this dude is out of his mind he's blind and he just makes a boat <laughs> like he's clearly never seen a boat too either maybe one of the children like explained a boat to them because they wasn't that one of their favorite toys is they had the little like model boat oh i think it was so maybe yeah. oh now i'm putting pieces together as we're talking but maybe he used that mm -hmm. as like a quote-unquote blueprint to be like okay if that's a boat i'm just gonna try and replicate <laughs> I mean, the dude's a badass. Like, it's kind of in every sense of the word. It's wild. It's not like you can go ask questions to anyone and be like, hey, how do I, like, what, <laughs> does this look right yeah. to you? <laughs> right, like, how does this look right? I can't tell. I'm blind, man. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> uh, it's crazy, but it just kind of helps his aura. It's like this dude is just, like, you can trust him, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, 
they rely on him. He's that paternal, I guess, figure. Like he's protecting them in more ways than just rescue, essentially. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm going to kill these guys. He's everything. He's that encompassing figure for them. And good thing he's a builder, as Tamaki June says. He's like, you guys have a builder. And I guess those are the people tasked with building <laughs> their infrastructure. Probably they're like, because I think they live in like huts. I don't know if they're tents, but like these like little huts that they live in their village. Yeah. So I wonder if he was the one who built all of that too. I don't think they touched on that, but. I feel like it would make sense just be, just considering why would people trust him to start over as much as they have through all of this, unless he had some sort of special talent beyond the combat portion. Cause you know, combat seems to, it's like important, but it doesn't seem like they're not seeking out combat unless they absolutely need to. It's like the only other skill that I think would be the best is like having building secure shelters and homes so that you can just survive. It clearly looks like they go through the seasonal winters and cold stuff. So yeah, being out to the elements is not ideal. He's one of my favorite protagonists in like any show. Because I'll save some of the explanation to when we get further, uh, when yeah. you can like see more like his arc and stuff. <laughs> he's just a badass Drew, and like it's just yeah. fun. You know what I mean? It's like it's cool to see this dude. He's like, man, that dude's just dope. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just a dope dude. The one of the offhand comments during that initial scene of them escaping is the is he's like, if anything, if Drill and Morel can do something, I can do it bigger. And I thought that was hilarious because it's like the the first signs of the direct rivalry between the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah which i've been like wondering about in the back of my head for the longest time i feel like his pride is like damn i can't see this dude's better you know what i mean jerry morrell's held on this pedestal like this like yeah. ominous figure that's like almost more than human and he's like well shit i built a boat can he build a boat <laughs> like, you know what I mean? like, like i don't know dude you're blind i can see right yeah, I don't know if I could build, give me 20 years. I don't know if I could build a boat. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I'm not very confident. I know, um, right? On top of like whatever else you have to do, like we barely have enough time in the modern world. Can you imagine being like, oh, we got to make sure we have enough like food for the season or we might starve to death? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> what you do in your free time? Building a boat? And I, I'm glad we're actually talking about this because this is something I, it's not directly related to sea, but film in general, right? Or, mm -hmm film tv in general i was having a conversation with aiden who's been on the podcast before I mean, we were talking about the green knight i don't know if you've seen it yet no but i want to yeah you should you should i really think you'll like it and to just the long and short is we see it differently I, we both weren't the biggest fans of it but where i kind of could appreciate what it was she was a little more just it's just not her cup of tea right she's just like yeah. no and to save any spoilers for that, because I know we're not talking about The Green Knight, but what I think is done really well there is film for the sake of film, like art. It's like a art, it's a masterpiece of art, but it's not very fun. Yeah. It's like you have to go into it because you're, it's like going to a gallery, like an art gallery professional is very clean and like high maintenance versus some of these pop-up art galleries where it's like music playing and there's drinks and it's like this more of a party with art. It's like, that's the difference. So I think what C does really well, granted the, the whole premise is a cool premise to begin with, but so is Green Knights, is they make sure that it stays fun and it's not too much, like, it's not too dark and depressing, or, you know what I mean? It, that If you think about what the story is, it's kind of like a depressing story, right? It's like a tragic in a sense, but they keep it fun. I feel like Baba Voss, how badass he is, and he has this very dark past. Yeah. But he still has like little, you know, quirky lines like, yeah, whatever he can do, I can do better. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I just really appreciate that because it keeps you like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, that's a really interesting point. It gets the like levity of it almost. Or like, I don't know, it's like, or like the mundane things of like, oh, wait, they're still human. And even though like they're being chased and likely could get killed at any moment here, he's still going to make the point to say these things because. <laughs> Right. Like, we're all human. <laughs> you got to find laughter in those moments. So I'm glad we touched on that because I, I really, I think that's something I didn't realize on the first watch. But now it's like, oh, this is a fun, it's just a fun show. Like, at yeah. the end of everything, it's enjoyable to watch. Like, yeah, like, it's interesting for me because, you know, I'm, I'm watching this all for the first time, but it, it's fun for me to, like, see how the children are changing. Like, those, that's, like, some of my favorite fun parts. Like, the the dynamic between the children and the dynamic between... The parents and the children and like this 
like internal struggle of like between all of them like yeah. Kofun and Hanwa and their like interaction where Kofun like I even said it will it was toward later on we'll talk to that part specifically but he's just a good person and he they have like the, the snitch finally kind of gets his just desserts at least earlier on the episode they use him as like um a hostage to get out of this yeah. to get out of the town to save themselves because they know he's up to no good and they're already blaming them at, even before that they get any sort of trouble actually happening and right. he has every right to kill this guy and he decides not to and then his sister has this moment of hesitation where she could have easily done it and it, it just it just find it really interesting is like the disposition is so different between the two of them even though they've lived and grown up in very much the same circumstances so it's like how does that happen you know what i mean <laughs> right it is super cool and like they showed that i think they planted the seed in the third episode the, the previous one where they are different and you can kind of see where they're going and their trajectory and this episode kind of just serves at least in their story arc to just you know cement that idea that they're different and wherever that ends up, we'll see. Yeah. But hey. it's, it's just cool to see. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey. <laughs> um, That's fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's cool to see their dynamic, right? Like, as you're saying, it's just, you know, he's, I don't, I doubt this is the intention, but it just makes me think of, it, it reminds me of MLK Malcolm X, where one is more like, not like more, aggressive so to speak you know like we don't take that bullshit right other ones like no like peace like we're not here to do that we're not going to kill this person because we don't have to like yeah. that's not who we are so not like a direct correlation but it just reminds me of that of like they both have the same end goal in mind yeah because um skipping ahead a little bit but there comes a decision in a, in a vote that they have to make that main group it's a big decision and we'll get to that but they both vote the same way even though they're so different so it's like their goal is the same but it's how they're getting there yeah. is very different the mean the means to the end right yeah so we can basically they get on the boat from there and the this is how they I, it's like the same thing that happened in episode one where the mundane thing of like traveling across a bridge or in this sense traveling on a boat becomes a really tense and drawn out scene because all of the witch hunters are spread out across the banks of the river and they're yeah. using their their whips, I guess, they with like a piece of metal on the end to kind of yeah. see if they hear anything different because they're being silent on the river. And I thought the way that they like signaled each other to be quiet was so cool. <laughs> Where they use <laughs> right. like, like palm signs or you like write in their hand with however they, their language works. And then yeah. they like put their hand up to their mouth as like a sign language almost. It's such a cool way of showing it and like how the message travels from one person to another and then to get more from Tamak Dejun and his like speech on it you feel it almost like just his intensity and ruthlessness I guess because he's basically yeah. holding the town hostage and his little villainous monologue from what, <laughs> is what you'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. And to touch on the palm thing, I thought that was dope too. And I thought it was like, because they did like a circle, right? They did something like this and mm -hmm. then like put their hand on their mouth. One thing I was like, what if someone in the back was like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, this <laughs> was like, what's going on? <laughs> it was like, shut, we haven't got to you yet. I don't know, but <laughs> it didn't happen. That, that would way. be our <laughs> friends if you were. <laughs> yeah, so we'd be like, what are we going to do, guys? They're like, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> like, fuck. This would be Eric, probably. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I, what I thought that was is them saying, like, we're surrounded, be quiet. I don't know if that's what it was, but that's what I read it as. But yeah, that was a super cool thing that I was like, everyone shut the fuck up. Like, it's about to get real. But then when Tamaki Ju and that, there's like this, it reminded me of a quiet place, like how quiet it gets at, at this one scene. And you hear the water kind of just flowing and like nothing else really. But then you hear the creaks from the boat and like Tamaki June's listening and you can tell he has a very, as probably most of them, but I feel like he has a more heightened sense of hearing mm -hmm. that he was able to distinguish hearing those wood creaks and being like oh, okay they're in the river they're on a boat and then he begins his monologue and the dude is a villain and all of that stuff and i'm like this guy's a i feel like to make it work he had to be just as equal 
of a badass as Baba Voss is. Yeah. Maybe in a different way. But it's like you look at him and you're like, this is a cool dude, like ruthless. I, but I'm like inspired by him just because of his like intensity and his I don't know, he's the like the bad thing. yeah, he's just like the bad guy you you that you hope for in a lot of ways. Yeah. You like him. <laughs> he's like a yeah. likable when he was gonna have to jump off the dam or whatever it was in the previous yeah. episode. You like didn't want him to. <laughs> You're like, yeah. no, don't do it. Like I don't want him to win per se, for sure. And like, you don't want him to lose either. <laughs> and then like when he was taunting, because he's like talking, taunting the children in his speech, like saying, like, I heard your your cries when you were first born, kind of thing. And I half expected Hanwa to do something. Like, because yeah. Cause she's kind of like proud and stuff like that. And she's like, Oh, I could just shoot him with my bow right now. Like he wouldn't know nothing, you right. know? <laughs> but she yeah, doesn't but do it. <laughs> that's one thing. That's one thing I was surprised she didn't. I was thinking just for how her character was. I'm like, I'm surprised she wasn't like, I can end this right here. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a question. I was curious why. And I don't remember. I don't know if you, I don't remember if she like made a move to do it. I think she uh, pulled out an arrow, but I don't know why she stopped. Yeah. I don't. I think it was more of, the, I think at that point they had started throwing the ropes and I think they may have hit someone. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. And so it, it became not the best thing to do or they had right. all started entering the water. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question because it, it could have, it, there's a chance that's a plot hole in some sense because they could have been ended, but because of the way that they wrote the scene, of just trying to them just trying to escape because maybe it's just a numbers thing right you kill the leader yeah. and now all of a sudden you're surrounded on all sides they're not going to give up until yeah because you know they you cut off the head but everyone else it's like well they're here for you now they're not going to just stop yeah. because there's no leader telling them what to do anymore and going That's back true. home as since to june is like the favorite general right mm-hmm. yeah. going back it's home like to tell the queen that oh by the way they killed your you're, you're number two. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of them so, are dead. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's a curious choice, but it works. It's not something so like, it yeah. doesn't make you like, doesn't take you out of it. You know what I mean? It's something we notice now in retrospect talking about it. But yeah, so then moving forward, that fight scene in the water, I thought it was really dope. It's fun. Um, I, dude, the, whoever, I don't know if it's the same choreographer, but whoever that person is, like bravo to you because <laughs> like every fight scene in this is just like God that damn. water choreograph like i can only imagine how many takes that had to have for that because that's not like i can't remember any like actual water scene off the top of my head that like that that yeah not off the top man I mean, i'm sure there are i'm sure there is some but i can't yeah think of any. i don't know it's just a cool idea and to just have it like this Baba Voss thinking on his feet per usual where he's like ties the rope around his waist so he knows how to get back to the boat. And I'm like, what is he doing? I see him doing it when they're being quiet and stuff. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, right. He's blind. So he has to figure out like an easy way to get back to the boat. Otherwise he's going to get, and just like the intensity of it where he lets one guy go and then (laughs) he just goes at, goes ham after that. (laughs) He's like feeling like the water push against him. I'm like, man, that's just, it's so dope. It's so dope, like in anime. I, I know you don't watch anime that that much, but something that now, like getting older and stuff, I, it, I it's hard to watch because like they explain every little thing that they do. Like they do something and then like they talk for five minutes about what they just did, and it's like, hey, I get it. Just keep <laughs> like just move on. Um, <clears throat> but I like how in this they don't give you that exposition where he's not like, I'm gonna jump in the water, and when they get close, I'm gonna like he just does it, and then you just put it together as you watch. Um, so to me, that's a sign of being a good writer is like, you don't underestimate your audience and they'll figure it out. Like we watch him, he's putting the rope around his waist. And at first you're like, why is he doing that? And then it's like, ah, that's smart. Keep moving. You know what I mean? I do appreciate the writing in that aspect. From there, just as they're about to finish the escape, they bring the snitch, Gabravax, back to the shore. And now this is where Hanwa takes the opportunity that she had before. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And finally, the snitch gets just desserts as it's four episodes in. And this guy's been causing nothing but trouble for the majority of the season so far. (laughs) And it also gives an opportunity to to see how much Tamakta June doesn't care. He's like, oh, yeah, this is just my job. And you were just a tool to help me get my job done. And you've outlived your usefulness. 
you definitely feel the weight of it too because at the end of that they say kill the whole tribe and so now it's yeah. really just like five or six people total um yes. that are left of this tribe you alluded to this earlier the vote is taking place and it's basically i believe they have a note that was supposed to be given to them at their 17th birthday or something like that it, is that what it was Yes. Yep. And they have to read it. And basically it's a call to the children to follow a road. I, I think it was like lavender trail or some, I'm forgetting. Yeah. The detail. It was just some no. kind of flower. Um, to yeah. It was place. a lavender something. Yeah. yeah. To basically find their father. And so it's really, I think it's an interesting idea and it's this alluding that Jerla Morell is creating a new utopia of some kind. And it's basically given to a vote of the tribe because that's how the tribe has always dealt with any big decision is they basically give everybody a vote and whoever, you know, majority wins. And so they come to this point of either just getting off the river and finding shelter and just disappearing into the woods, or they continue down the river as long as they can and keep going that way until they find Jerlyn Morrell. Naturally, the parents say no. They're, they don't want to continue into the unknown <laughs> and risk even more uncertainty, whereas the children give their reasons for continuing on. And like you said before, with like the, the Malcolm X and Martin Luther King examples, I think you're spot on with it. I think it's an interesting like dichotomy there of like why travel to the unknown or rather traveling to understand your father when yeah. as of right now it's more surely that you're going to end up dead or in prison for some reason or another i kind of like how they still show that it's like but even though they're different they still like they still want the same thing mm -hmm. right and i think that's important because then it's like you you make if you everything they disagree on right if it's everything like he's this way and he wants to stay but she's this way and she wants to go then they become like enemies to each other and i think what's good is that it's important that they're not enemies they're still siblings and they still love each other but it's just like that sibling you know like i'm sure you and your brother had this where you have days where you hate them but mm -hmm. like you don't hate them but you're just like i swear to god if you weren't my brother <laughs> you know what i mean like, <laughs> and i feel like that so they do a good job of keeping that family aspect but just showing that they do have like inherent differences. And so it's interesting that whole split in, and I love how Hanuma was going on in her rant because there's one vote left and it's uh, Bo. Yep. And she's not really part of the group. She's kind of like the outcast. I think Bo's mom told her to go with them because the mom was like, it's not safe here to go with them. Yeah. Um, but the last vote was up to her. Hanuma was like, why does she get a vote? Da -da -da, doesn't matter. Saying some hurtful things to Baba Voss too that even he comments on later is like we've argued before but this was different mm -hmm. and she's going her spiel and Bo's like no nah, we can go <laughs> it's like oh that's a show um, I'm like shut her up real good I'm like <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> but the part I didn't notice this the first time but you brought this up where you said I really like Kofun because after that happens Kofun goes and talks to Bo and you know just trying to figure out where she's at I think he says thank you for like letting them go yeah, she's um, like, you didn't need to do anything. Like, this is not your path to go on and all of that right. whole spiel. And I was like, wow. Like, I don't know. I just yeah. really appreciate Kofun's sense of morality, I guess, of like, mm -hmm. or at least it's not even just morality. It's just like caring for people, even though it's like he, it's like almost he's aware that because of his own birth that he drags people through the mud in some sense. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, he's aware. I think aware is a perfect word. I think he's aware where Hanawa might be a little more tunnel visioned, you know, mm -hmm. but he even, and that doesn't end like that continues on with Hanawa for like hopefully like he's aware of how she is too. Cause he even says, well, this is hard for her. She's not angry. It's just, this is hard. And Bo says a line that I didn't appreciate enough the first time, but I love it now. And she goes, isn't this hard for you too? but how he's still like nice and not going about it that way. And that's when he said like, wow, I really like him, you know? And I do too. I'm like, yeah, that he's just a good person. I feel like he picked up a lot of the softer qualities of Baba Voss. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's actually, yeah, that's a good, that's a good note. And where Hanuar got the, <laughs> the more aggressive, <laughs> the more aggressive Baba Voss. <laughs> yeah. We skipped a part 
where it's talking with the queen because so right after the escape attempt they send a note back to the queen and she so in this episode broadly you get a lot more information on like how that society is functioning or more of the key players outside of the queen because at this point you haven't really seen anyone except the queen and maybe some of the advisors that she regularly deals with but they're more subordinates like all in not like yeah. gonna doubt her directly and i think the first scene is like a parliament room which kind of doubles also as like a religious center almost it's a really interesting looking room i thought it was cool <laughs> the way yeah. that they had the decor in it and like the echoey like the the pseudo religious feel of it but the, the thing about it was the word that comes to mind is the audacity that some of the key political figures have they're immediately just going for it and i'm like whoa yeah, right. <laughs> so if you want to elaborate and this is where my expectations on, upon first watch where i was like oh this is different than what i where i thought this was going to go because again typically when you have the crown or the royal or whatever their advisors are like no don't say shit <laughs> just leave it as it is you know what i mean we could look at like game of thrones and just look how like something like that worked everyone was mm -hmm. like super respectful they didn't defy the king or whatever but in this one, they're like, nah, fuck that. You're stupid. <laughs> what are like, all the people don't like you. This is dumb. <laughs> they essentially is what right. they're saying. And she's like, oh, I didn't know. I think she says a line like, I, I'm pretty sure I'm the queen until yeah, that, she like, then I don't she, feel sick or something like she's that. She like calls on the constitution. He's like, oh, by our constitution, the monarch is the one that makes decisions or is like in control of it. I'm like, oh, damn. I wasn't expecting that at all. The witch hunter... Tamakta June just got sent back out and he's like, oh, and then he failed again. And I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she said, send all the troops. So there's this thing. And I love how it ended because it seemed like she is someone who was very hard to shut up. But one of the advisors says like the people believe we're being governed by someone with a broken heart. And that shut her up because the person they're looking for is someone she loved before. So I was like, oh, damn. Say. I'm like, the whispers are real. I'm like, because I, you never really know, like, what people think. Until that very scene, you don't know what other people outside of that room think of her. And right. now you're finally getting, like, through the grapevine, but also direct, I don't even know what the right word is, like, vehemently opposed these people are to her behavior at this point. Because apparently she's clearly been, like, deluded for, or delusional for some period of time for the other key figures of making sure people are you know comfortable yeah <laughs> to to have them being like directly at her and be like you need to check yourself before you wreck all of us <laughs> right right and they're fed up like clearly they're like this enough's enough man like we don't care there's other issues going on that we need to address and she's not doing her part and then i guess since we, we covered after that we can skip back to the queen yeah. When the advisors are meeting, it's like in secret, or they believe to be so, and the queen's shadow is listening in. And basically, they're plotting to kill her. They're like, that's, it's enough. We'll make it look like it was an accident, and people think it was divine intervention, essentially. And so they're like, okay, cool, let's do it. But again, the queen finds out, and she's like, bet. <laughs> she's like, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that whole scene when they're about to do it, right? So they have a spider in a cage, just like a tarantula or whatever, or something, some sort of nasty looking thing, spider. And they bring her into this room and it's like a sex room, like a huge orgy. It just sounds like something that's like, she'd be like, oh, this is cool. And they're so like, we have a <laughs> right, we're like, oh, okay, we're doing that, right? But again, she knows and they go to offer, I, I think it's supposed to be a gift, right? They're gonna give her the bird. It's what, like they yeah. say the spider is like, it seems like yes. it's a bird or something that, or at least categorically, the bird seems to be like the signifying of whatever this ritual is. And yeah. because she's the queen, she gets to be the first one that hears this bird. Right. But it's a spider in there, but she knows. So she's like hesitant. She's like, okay, we'll open it. Da, da, da. I also and thought the people were being super fishy. Oh, you're <laughs> like head advisors there. And like the lady who like runs this ritual is all like, I, I don't know. They were laying it on a little too thick. Yeah, I was like, bro, you guys are terrible. Like, even if she didn't have the shadow, I would have been like, what What are you doing? What's up? They were like, oh, it's a, maybe the bird's 
not afraid. That's why it's not. It's like shut yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like these terrible fucking excuses. I'm like um, this lady's way too ruthless to fall for something this overt. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, come on, you guys could have tried better than that. <laughs> it would have been, I guess, that they're trying to be make it look like an accident. But I'm like, they could have just like she can't see. So whatever, they wanted to go their clever way, but it backfired and she kills all of them. Which I'm like, that's when I was like, oh, she, like. Tamaki June is that dude, but she's, like, even more ruthless than he is. Yeah. She even says a line, I think, right after that. I'll bring us all down to- together or something like that, or... I- yeah, I forget- she said... I forget she exactly said, like, the quote. It's something like, everyone's against me, so I'll kill everyone, and I'll start with you, or you go first, or something like mm-hmm. that. So she's like, oh, the whole city or whatever is against me? Okay. They can fuck off, too. Which, we'll get to that. <laughs> but... So after that, Baba Voss and the group, they, I think this is where we're at, they settle. They, like, get a small little camp area where they can, like, get off the water because we didn't mention this, but Magra got stabbed in the fight in the river. So they need to get her off, get her warm and stuff. So they sleep there. Not much goes on until the next morning when they wake up and all of their stuff is, not all of it, but a lot of their weapons and stuff like that is stolen. Yeah, They're I thought like, I, like, okay. missed a scene there. I was like, wait, was there, like, a scene where they, sh- like, hinted at something happening overnight? Or, like, what? I'm like, did I miss yeah. something? Did I, like, look down randomly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so they're like, okay, whatever, it's just weapons, let's go. But Magra's like, oh, no, they stole something important to me. She never says what it is, but the scene before that, you see her clutch a pouch, and she, like, holds it close to her chest, and that's what's missing. They don't say what it is, but she's like, no, we need to find it before we leave. So they set off to go find it. Yeah. All she says um, is something that was a memory of her father's or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And Baba, all she's willing Baba, to say. <laughs> and Baba Voss is like, I know it's probably important because you wouldn't put our kids in danger, but just please tell me so I know what we're doing. And she's like, nah, I just get it. Yeah. So I wish, wish we could talk about that. We'll get there. But <laughs> To be continued. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then after that, are we missing anything from that scene? I don't think so. Oh. The, there's a note that Hanawa does have a soft side. So the night before, she was talking to Magra, and she was basically saying yes. how she cares. And she's like, I want all of us together. Like, again, that family aspect. Like, I want us all together. And, you know, even though she says hurtful things and stuff like that, she still knows that's her family. And she wants that utopia that Jorla Morrell's building. She's, like, hoping that's, like, their salvation. Yeah. So, like, now you're seeing her desires, like, what she wants. Which is a cool touch, because it's, like, she's so, not necessarily ruthless, but driven. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's a good um, adjective, but you, now you see the soft side. So I think that was an important scene. And yeah, so after that, we go back to the crown, I guess, with Queen Kane. And I love this whole scene where she's kind of like going through, it looked like she was like in a trance almost, <laughs> but like basically, I don't know exactly what she does, but she like fucks up the whole mechanism and all this stuff that they're working with. Because they, they like live inside and around a dam. Yep. And so she's like messing with all the controls. And then you see the water like get sucked in. Yeah. She turned off all the turbines of the dam basically. So no water could fall through. Which yeah. I didn't think about this. But if it's been like 100 years and those dams are barely running. Turning off all of it is a really bad idea. Because now you have the full weight of all that water <laughs> on the other side of the dam holding it back which is yeah clearly as the episode shows the dam can't hold that anymore yeah so yeah. she basically just killed everybody on the lower side of the dam <laughs> yeah yeah she was she said she was gonna do it and i don't know so that to me is like oh yeah she doesn't give a fuck <laughs> like, I'm like she, she's crazy crazy yeah yeah <laughs> she is and that was another i didn't expect that you don't see and, like, in the next episode, we'll see, you know, more of what happens. But, like... Yeah, the repercussions I was of like, those choices. Yeah, I was like, that's for a queen or king or whatever to say, like, I'm going to kill all my subordinates in the fourth episode. <laughs> it's like, you don't, you mm-hmm. usually don't see that. Um, it took Daenerys until season seven, but whatever. But, yeah, it was just interesting. And, uh, yeah, where it goes after this is really... This is where I was like, this is... Not only is it good, it's unique because it it takes a turn that's like unexpected from a different kind of what kind of genre is that like like fantasy i guess yeah fantasy genre where you have like the mad king or queen or whatever it takes a turn and i really appreciate it but yeah 
Yeah, I don't know where it goes yet. So I'm I can't comment on it any further. I yeah. all I can say is that the pacing of these episodes is really interesting for me because it's it doesn't follow like you said the normal pattern of these things where it's like episode three ended with them telling secrets or like what is the children's like backstory more so and or like the thing she never said about Jerlyn Morell and that gets pushed back again and it's like they put this like lure out for the audience and then they like oh by the way there's something more important to deal with real quick yeah. <laughs> you know and so they just it's like they're pulling you along it's like right before you're about to reach out and grab that piece of candy they're like oh not yet <laughs> like that's what right. it feels like and then yeah like the queen story is just really interesting to me in general it's almost as even the show says they're driven by a broken heart and here's like all those repercussions oh that's the one thing she says she says if you won't come to me i'll come to you and i'm like oh dang <laughs> yeah she's like all right she's like i'm done i'm done <laughs> right <laughs> we're, we're I'm not going to stay here anymore. If my people hate me and the only one I want is out there. All right, fine. I'll go. It's just, I love that choice. I love it. And it's so different. It very much is. I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see the rest. It's so good. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like you're going to say that every episode until we hit season two and then we're, we're both going to be in the dark. (laughs) Yeah. I can't wait for that because then we're both watching it for the first time. So (laughs) yeah. No, it's good. Pacing is awesome. To me, this episode, like, when I was watching after the river fight scene and they'd settled on their decision, I was like, is this where the episode ends? I'm like, I feel like that was quick. And then it's like, there's, that's only half. I know. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I like looked, like I hovered over the time remaining. I was like, wait, really? There's still like 15 more minutes to go. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of love that choice. Cause instead of sometimes they make you wait till the end of the episode to get to the good stuff. And this one's like, no, we'll start off with that. Like hit it, hit the ground running. You know what I mean? And then we'll, you know, dip, do some exposition type stuff to figure out where we're at after this. And then we'll mm-hmm. bring it back up at the end, leave you a little cliffhanger. It's like, it's really, it's just genius, honestly. It's really good. Yeah, that's a good point. And the idea too that I think about it is the, if they're on a boat and they're traveling down the river, they need to like have time pass in some way. And so they use that time to explore what happen, is happening with the queen. Rather than yeah. having boring scenes of like filler conversation or something of them mm-hmm. just listing la- lazily down the river. That's not good TV and it's not a good use of just production budget. So right. but, <laughs> so I, I think they did a good job of trying to push the multiple threads of the narratives around. And, and we don't know what the witch hunter is doing at all as of right now. I guess just to wrap up the last point of this episode is the twins see this shape who they're kind of arguing about who took the stuff um that's stolen and, and they look over and she's like stop arguing like just look over there and all of a sudden you see like this silhouette in the woods you can't really tell who he is it looks like he's got a lot of gear on but and, and then they like cut away show the same scene again and that figure is gone and then roll credits so yeah. lots of there's so many like threads that it's like wait what's going where's each of these things going <laughs> and i know where they go i yes. can't wait till you know <laughs> i can't wait till you know where they go uh, <laughs> It's good. It's good. Cool beans. So as always, if people have any other thoughts, opinions, or fun production facts, if for whatever reason, someone from who worked on the show happens to listen to us ramble and get something really wrong, I would love to hear from you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let us know and um, to be continued until the show is over. Because this, this yeah. has been a lot of fun. This is like one of my high points for the week. To, to do and to, to actually just talk about these shows in a, a deeper level. It's just a lot of fun. And I have a feeling we'll be doing not only this show, but we'll probably do other shows or, or films down the road. Mm-hmm. I already so, know what we should do next or think what I know what we should do next. You mentioned it. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Over text the other day. <laughs> yeah. 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 So no, these are really fun. I enjoy them too. Yeah. I like just gives you a good perspective and you know, breaking down what you just watch and being like okay now why do we like that it's dope but like why is it dope? yeah you know it, to me it feels like some of these things you do only in during school but it's like yeah. unless you're in very specific friend groups or like professional groups you don't get to do these kind of things but like these are the things that are for me it's fun because it's like you get to explore the technical and the creative all at the same time get to appreciate it at another level and yeah. You know, it's like if you, especially the way I see it is if you're someone who wants to be into film or into any of these creative jobs that create these kinds of things, 
you should be wanting to go deep and talk about all the nitty gritty things that make it work yeah. or not work, right? So that you don't go and do it in your own job. <laughs> right. Or in your right. fun time. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's, I don't know, it's endlessly important, especially if you're in that industry, right? You don't want to take the enjoyment on everything. And that's where you can kind of fall into where everything you watch are critiquing it or whatever. And you're like, yeah. you're not just enjoying it. It's like, well, enjoy. So that's why I'm glad I watched it once for pure enjoyment. And now I can go back and like, unpack it and i'm glad that i'm not finding like plot holes and issues yeah, to, or whatever it's like it. <laughs> yeah i'm like it's still great like on the second watch i'm like there's still nothing really to comment on it's just really done well right but it's important it's important to be able to look at things and figure out it's easy to say i don't like this because it's harder to say i like this because in yeah. my opinion, I think it's really yeah. easy to, un to give criticism and say like, oh, you should have done this. I would have done it this way. I think that's anyone can do that. That's easy. But yeah. to look at something and be like, that was great. Why did I like that so much? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think it's invaluable, for, especially for people in any type of literary, which I guess film is literary, right? Yeah, kind of, maybe, but any type of field like that, I think it's really important. It's one thing to say like in engineering or something is people, as soon as there's a newcomer, on the block who's designing a product that's been around like right now just gonna use the example of electronic vehicles because it's like hot in everyone's mind there's a lot of people that downplay it and like well it's just a car you blah 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 but it's one thing to downplay what people are trying to do differently and it's another thing to say okay here's what's going on that's different right like opinion yeah. aside of like what like maybe it's just not your flavor fine but to actually say like and give it the credit that it's due i think is really important for these kinds of things and quite frankly, it's probably not done enough, right? I haven't, didn't look at the whole cast of this show, but it's like hundreds of people and like probably four years of production and <laughs> to, yeah. filming is only like six to six to 12 months of the part of it. The rest of it is all editing and whatnot. And so right. I, to me, there's just a lot of people that you have the stars of the show and all the, the big names of the writers, directors, and producers that get on the byline when people first talk about it, but there's still like an army of people that, you know, poured a lot of time and effort to making it so easy for people to watch where it's, oh, it's a weekly show, you know, one hour a week. Right. There's a lot more effort than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, the and reason it all works, it, it comes out to that is because of how much effort people put into it. And that's one thing I love about film is that it, there's so many people involved and they all have to do their part for it to work. It's not just like, oh, I don't want to make, you can have independent projects or whatever, but to make something on that scale of C, like you have to have a team and everyone has to know their job, execute and do their thing. And I, I feel like that's one of the most beautiful things about film is because it's a collaboration at the end of the day. Yeah. But like you said, you have your director, your top actor, like if you get Keanu Reeves or Jason Momoa or whatever, like they're the, they're going to come to the top, but like they just filled that one role. There's hundreds of other roles and it's dope. And I don't know, it's just so, it's so dope. And it's, I feel like it deserves in a sense, further appreciation than what it gets. Yeah, I get not everyone's going to go break down with every movie, if that makes sense. But I just feel like when someone says, I don't like that, give it the, give the people who spent hours and, you know, with the strike and stuff going on, uh, we don't have to get into that. But with all that stuff going on, all these people who put so much time and effort into making this thing happen so you can watch it just for an hour, give them the respect to say, I don't like it. And then build on that don't just say i don't like it it's stupid and, okay well that's fair if that's your opinion but like why do you think that i have a, i'm working on an article on this so cool. i won't get on critiquing things i think we'll leave it at there because i think it's a good i think it's a good point to end it on and just giving a little bit extra of like what the reasoning to, to do deep dives of these nature in general and it's fun to just do continuations of this because you get to see all the evolutions of it in some of my mind i'm sure you do this too but you get to understand like how like maybe the storyboarding or how did they write the all the different threads of the story what do they want to do and how could you see them coalesce and spread out and all that evolution of what it takes to write a story <laughs> it's, it's just a cool avenue for me and and as always, I'm always trying to explore these things in so many different directions, but also just highlighting how people can get more from what it is they're doing. But I think there's also another point where you can watch something to like, as you're keen on saying, is watching something to make you think. Um, and yeah. how do you pull that back into everyday life? And I find that to be the most enjoyable because I think at the end of the day, art says something about where you live or how you'd like to live. 
that's where I kind of tend to go with these types of stories, especially just sci-fi as a, as a category. And it leads me to so many other places. Like I think Dune comes out soon. So I'm sure we'll yes, probably yes. do. I, I kind of want to do something on that one. Maybe we'll do like a, like a Dune original or maybe like a Dune book club type thing or something. Yeah. <laughs> have like the book or something and then like watch the movie and see like what, what we thought about the differences <laughs> yeah oh we should i can't wait for that i cannot wait jason uh, momoa's in that too actually is he really oh my god yeah he has in yeah. everything now <laughs> <laughs> but until episode five yep boom peace